Welcome to another season of the Cool Tool Show. Show and chair, and um, my guest this week is Charles Platt, an old friend. Charles, could you introduce yourself to our listeners? Yeah, I've written various kinds of books all my life, and I got to know Kevin when I was writing for Wired magazine. And since then, I have continued writing books about electronics mainly. Yeah, it's a great series. Maybe we'll talk about that at the end. So, Charles, um, you've been on Cool Tools before and shared some of your great picks. I always love to hear what you have um, suggesting because you pay attention to these kinds of things. What's your first pick for this week? My first pick for this week is this seemingly harmless device, which does look harmless. I am using for its health giving purposes because someone such as myself who tends to be obsessive compulsive and doesn't get up from the chair (laughs) when you get interested in something, I can sit here for eight hours. This is not good for the human body, especially the old human body. So you need a reminder to get up and walk around. My doctor impressed this upon me. So this is just a kitchen timer, but it's a particularly nice one Uh because it doesn't have an annoying user interface. It is smart enough to know that if you start it from zero, you want it to count up. Well, at least if you press the button properly. If you start it from zero, you want it to, there we go, you want it to count up. Whereas if you preset it by turning the, it's very hard to do this because Zoom is reversing the image. Yeah, 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 So, but you can see, you can set the time. And then you press it again, and then it counts down. So I set it to uh, 45 minutes, and then it beeps to remind me. Now, of course, you can do this with any of the little computer clocks which are available. But to me, they lack the authority of a physical (laughs) object in front of me on the desk, which starts beeping. Then I know I have to take it serious. Right. If if it's a a computer app, you feel that it's in cahoots with the computer. Well, it's part of the computer, so I just yeah, sit right. looking at it and wonder if I should adjust it for an extra 40 minutes. Right, exactly. So. And, and, and does this um, timer have a name? The uh, Amazon Kitchen Magnetic Countdown Cooking Display. That's oh, because it's a cooking timer. Okay, a kitchen yeah. timer. Yeah. Okay, that's great. Um, okay, Charles, and what's your second pick? My second pick since you were talking before we started the recording about Navajo radio, and I am within range of Navajo radio out here in the Western wilderness, I have an AM radio. Now, when was the last time you listened to AM radio? Well, because- Never, never. never. (laughs) AM radio is like the, the radio that time forgot. And I happen to be writing a book about radio and how to build your own little AM transmitter and receiver, which is a lot of fun actually, because it's so cheap. And so we needed a radio to test the transmitter. So I had to buy the cheapest possible radio. And as you can see, it couldn't be much cheaper. It's $10, I think. And once I started listening to AM radio, I got really sort of hooked on it because first of all, it, it requires a lot of patience. You can't listen to it much during the day because solar radiation interferes with reception. You have to wait until the sun goes down. And then magically all these stations appear and they have that old fashioned uh, wavering in and out, hissing and blips. It's like a struggle. You have to work to listen to AM radio, especially if it's coming from a long way away. But Unlike FM, which is limited to about 30 or 40 miles, AM can come from hundreds of miles away. So you also have the thrill of adventure. Uh And Uh it's just interesting enough to leave it on while I'm working, but not not so distracting that it stops me from working. But what kinds of things are you listening to? What, What are they saying on the stations that might even be worth paying attention to? Well... I don't know if any of it's worth paying attention to, but I enjoy it anyway. I don't listen to the sports broadcasts very much. Okay. I'm interested in team sports. But the Navajo stations 
uh, one of which is extremely powerful. It's a 50,000 watt station. They play modern versions of tribal war dances, which are uh -huh. extremely exciting. And then suddenly they will segue into white guy uh, country music. <laughs> so you never know what you're going to hear. And uh -huh. that's, the, that's the fun of the station. And then, of course, you get news, uh, some, some vaguely eccentric opinions expressed as fact, sort of like the precursor of Facebook. Right. Well, I mean, AM radio, nighttime AM radio was famous for this yeah. kind of fringe talk, talk radio at night. Yeah. The art bells of the world. Is that still going on? I think more in the urban areas and I'm so much in the wilderness here. I can pick up Phoenix uh -huh. so 150 miles away. Uh, I haven't listened to it that late though. So I don't know. I'd have to find out. Okay. So a little cheap AM radio, but you say, also mentioned that you were creating a station to broadcast. Well, you have to be careful with this because the FCC doesn't like you to do that at high power. Okay. Of course, but low power. Low power. And if the reader chooses to violate FCC regulations, there's not much we can do about it. Right, right. Except tell them not to, of course. But what would be the... Uh, uh, benefit of having a low power AM station that you're broadcasting? Is it just for the, ex for the experience of it, of doing it? Or, or does, is there something you can do with it you can't do otherwise? You can certainly set up your own little walkie talkies so that uh, you can communicate with other people in your uh -huh. domestic environment. But mainly it's just for the surprising ability to radiate power through air, which is so counterintuitive at this point because we're used to just plugging things in. But, you know, t t Tesla wasn't quite right. Of course, now you're going to get endless Tesla people uh, contradicting me, but he wasn't quite right in his idea about the ether and universal power that could be distributed everywhere in the world. But you can send power through the air. And seeing that on your workbench is... It's kind of uh, a surprise. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Okay. And, and uh, you're saying it's actually cheap these days to make a little – is that because like a walkie-talkie is basically similar to an AM radio station? Um, no, it's just, it just happens to be a low-tech hmm. kind of circuit. Uh, what, three transistors, one coil, a few ancillary components – and you can do it. You can also uh, do odd things such as uh, make a microcontroller into a transmitter because it's fast enough. It can create a carrier wave. Okay. Like cool. Pirate radio. All right. You could do that. We're not advocating that, but you could. Right. Um, will, the, will some of this be in your next electronics book? Yeah, we have a book under, I say we because I have a collaborator on this one who, who has the technical background I lack, okay. uh, Frederick Jansen. So, yeah, we have a contract with Make for this book on radio, and it will be called Make Radio. There you go. Okay, we'll look forward to that. So um, your third pick, Charles, what, what do you have for us this week? Well, Another circular, well, I can't really see what that is. Um, wow, I don't. What could it possibly be? Well, of course, it yeah. collapses. It's okay. a travel hairbrush. And oh. if, you, if you push underneath the, the brush. <laughs> That's fantastic. Down. Wow. You can, if, if you have a little hair left, you can brush yeah. it. But fortunately, it can be disassembled because I didn't really want the, the mirror and the case. And you can remove the brush part so you just get this thing which is the lightest, smallest possible hairbrush. And if you flex it a little, it actually works. So knowing your wow. history of travel. This is ultralight. The, the ultralight hairbrush for those who are counting their ounces. When you were in your traveling mode, you had a lot of hair and you didn't care about brushing it, I imagine. I think, uh, no, I usually did not brush my hair, but you're, you're right. I might have had a comb somewhere. Right. Um, but the, um, the ultralights would really get off on that. Um, and I actually still pack pretty ultralight. I take, mm -hmm. I'm a minimalist when I'm traveling. I have yes. really the, the least amount that I can possibly get. So I do count ounces still today. Mm -hmm. 
Me too. Yeah. So this is only, I think, $2 or something yeah. for two, you know? Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And so your fourth tool then, cool tool. The fourth one is the serious one. I figured I had to give you something serious. This little thing from a bygone age in concept, it's a media player. You remember those? The, uh, media, you mean like a cassette player? No, oh, yeah, it's a Walkman kind of thing. Oh, a Walkman. Okay. It's kind a, of a, thing. Oh, oh, I see. It's a square. I know, right. because it, it's got this minimalist uh, Bauhaus design. Uh-huh. It's, uh, it's made by Astell mm-hmm. and Kern. And the thing it, is, some of us, age may be a factor, I don't know. Some of us don't like having our music in the cloud. We don't trust those cloud organizations to keep it there for us. Anything can happen. So we like to download MP3s from Amazon. And Amazon still makes this possible. They don't make it convenient because I don't think they really want to do that anymore. So I have about, I don't know, 10,000 hours of MP3s. Now, what do I do with them? Well, on my own computer here or over there on the stereo, I can play them without any trouble. But when I get into my car, I'm a victim of car audio, which, of course, is brain dead. It won't recognize files beyond a certain size. Some MP3s, it doesn't play properly at all. And this is even on my 2021 Honda you know, generic car. It's still, they still haven't kind of figured out how to do car audio. So what you need is a sophisticated player, which you can download all your music into. This has 64 gigabytes of non-volatile storage. And then it also has Bluetooth. So it turns your car radio into a mere slave, which is really all it's good for. And you control everything from here instead of letting the car do it for you. Mm-hmm. Moreover, this contains a graphic equalizer. So you can compensate for the appalling spikes in frequency response that car radios tend to suffer from and get genuine, reasonably high fidelity sound in your car under your control with your Bluetooth connection. So that was my solution to a problem which has been plaguing me for years. And, and this device that you're holding up, uh, is, is, is it, it basically it's an antique? Is, is it like an old? No, 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 no. It's state of the art. Brand new. Oh, yeah. Well, it could be brand new. This one actually came from Japan. For some reason that I don't understand, there's a big aftermarket, well, secondhand market for Estel and Kern on eBay from Japan, even though they're made in Korea. Now, I don't pretend to understand things like this. And, but, and, 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 and the, the thing that is, I'm still really not clear what that thing is that you're holding up. It's more than just a, um, like an SDD car. It's, it, does it have a battery in it as well? Yep, yep. And so it's like a storage unit with a battery and an interface? It's a music player with its own little... Um, it understands various different formats. You can also play videos on it if you want to look at a small screen. And it has it, it will play uncompressed formats or compressed formats. It's just a, a portable stereo, basically. And that's what it's sold as. I mean, it's, it's, mm-hmm. it's sold as a, as a music player, like an iPod right, or touch iPod or something. Exactly. Okay. Except that they do the job right. Um, because it's for hi-fi snobs, as we used to be called. I see. Okay, meaning you can load whatever kind of codecs you want on it. Exactly. Okay. And and as I say, it has the graphic equalizer built in so that if you're getting an annoying frequency response from your car audio, you can tweak one Uh uh, slice of the audio spectrum up and down. And this is something you're more likely to find on eBay rather than Amazon? Mm -hmm. Yep, this is my non-Amazon product. And, and what, what, what's the price range? Well, a new one costs about 1000 but this one costs 200 and something secondhand. And it came. Why would it possibly cost 1000 That doesn't make any sense. Because, well, first of all, it has 
components inside it, but but I think you know it's pretty much the only one of its kind you can get, as far as I know. And it's nicely made. And I don't uh, know okay. if you're a fetishist about audio, what you're going to do? What what and how how much storage does it have? Sixty four gigabytes. Sixty four gigabytes. Okay, which huh. is just enough for my entire ten thousand hours of. Uh, music uh-huh okay um so uh, and and the name of that again is as a uh, estel and kern okay a-s-t-e-l-l and k-e-r-n i think oh, estel and kern and so check on ebay for used versions of this media player and, and you will find they're all coming from japan i don't know why uh-huh. but you know they do show up and you get nice little messages saying, so sorry, we cannot ship today, but we will ship tomorrow. You know, that kind of stuff. And, and d- would an iPod not work the same? Or is there limitations because of the formats that it requires? There are all kinds of limitations. I actually uh, gave up using Apple products about 15 years ago, so I can't advise oh, I you much on that. Okay, all right. I, uh, I never forgave them for... Uh, taking away the license for their operating system to uh, whatever the power computing. Okay. All right. They put power computing out of business. So I thought, all right, that's it for me. <laughs> um, so Charles, um, you want to share something that you're excited by a project that you're working on? Um, we mentioned this maybe upcoming book on radio. Yeah, you radio. Have other, other recent um, books that you also have um, completed, maybe, um, what well, it tells about the perennial favorite, um, yeah. the introduction, third to, edition. Okay, third wow, edition. yeah, introduction to electronics, which still is basically keeping me alive on a yeah. not not a very ambitious level. What's the and, third edition? What's the third edition? Do you, have you new material, or is it corrections, or what? Some new material. Called? No, we we made all the corrections long ago. Um, the the third edition basically fixes all of the things that I wasn't quite happy about in the previous editions, but didn't have time to sort of manicure into perfection at that point. The, the experiments now use fewer components, so they don't cost so much, and the circuits are redesigned to make them more elegant. And there's a new feature on microcontrollers, which acknowledges the sad fact that most of them are very difficult to get working because they are distributed with inadequate documentation. Hmm. And, and by the way, the, the, I would uh, heartily recommend these books as probably the best way to learn electronics. They're, they're really stellar in their design and the logic of the, of the teaching. So um, well, thank you, Kevin. Yeah. So, but you were going to show another one. Um, well, there's the also the peculiar one, the uh, the oh, autobiography. Yeah. Now, why would anyone want to read my autobiography? I don't know. It, <laughs> it starts. It starts in post-war uh, United Kingdom, which most people don't know much about anymore. Because why should they? It's receded into the dim past. But also, most people don't realize that 1984 was written in 1948, and the world that Orwell described was pretty much what he was seeing outside his window, just pushed a little bit farther. The uh, grimness and depression and shortage of food, that was, we were living through that in those days. So it's, it's an interesting comparison with where we are now. As yeah. we're now realizing that actually food supplies, maybe we shouldn't take them for granted after all, you know? Yeah. Maybe yeah. things yeah. can go wrong. Maybe mm-hmm. people who win wars don't actually benefit from them. That's <laughs> what happened to the United Kingdom for sure. Yeah. It took about 10 years to get over World War II. Yeah. Um, so An Accidental Life is just, uh, and it has, it's large format, it has photographs, and it's fun. And and I very enjoyed reading them. There's a series of, of volumes as you go through your life. And um, I think what works for people 
re- other people who've said the same thing is your your honesty and candidness in both your highs and lows really make it um, make make me keep turning the pages because I really want to know what happens to you next, and that's really yeah, good. I, I was amused that you. You had more important things to read, but you kept reading my autobiography. I know. I was like, I can't stop <laughs> reading this stuff. <laughs> yes. It's like a yes. soap opera. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, so anyway, I, I did enjoy it. I do recommend them um, for kind of a fun read. And and you're right. Getting into the kind of psychology of uh, post-war England was something I knew nothing about, but you managed to also convey that too. So, um well, this has been great, Charles, as usual. You have very unusual picks. Thank you for, for that. Um, um, I look forward to your radio book when it's complete. And um, thanks for your electronics books as well. All right. Well, thanks for the, thanks for the chance to pontificate online. Always, yeah, always. always a pleasure. Nice to see you. Um, have a good day. We're glad that you enjoyed this issue of the Cool Tools Show and Tell. Just want to remind you that we have some other coolish material on our YouTube channel here. Please subscribe, comment, like. In addition, um, this Cool Tools Show and Tell is also available in an Audible podcast form. You can subscribe to it wherever you subscribe to other podcasts if you just wanted to listen. And if you're listening, know that there is a visual version of this on our YouTube channel, we're, we're actually showing the tools and um, there's a little bit more of a visual component there. In addition, the same folks that put us, uh, the Cool Tools website out, we also put out a free newsletter every week. It's very, very short. It's one page or less. We recommend six very brief items um, that are very succinct, easy to read. You can, deal with it in a couple minutes. And every week we bring to you the six cool things that we have uncovered and want to share. And it's called Recommendo with one M, recommendo.com. You'll be able to find it there. It's free. Join 50,000 plus other subscribers every Sunday morning. You'll get it in your email box. And it's actually one of the most popular things that we produce. But we do produce other newsletters as well. One of them is called What's in Your Bag? We have one that goes out to um, tools and tips for your workshop. So you can get those at our website um, and they are also free. And finally, um, I want to mention the fact that um, we do have a Patreon and um, this uh, podcast and this vidcast are supported by Patreon supporters. The minimum is a dollar a month. And for that, you get um, an email to ask us anything. We will respond and um, answer your question if we're able to. There are other higher levels. You can all see those at our Patreon page. And all those links are below right here. So thank you again for being a fan. And um, we'll keep producing stuff if you enjoy it. Thanks. Thank you all to this week's patrons who include Jay Walker, Nikolai Teleguine, Charles Cowens, David Sue. Jack Unverfirth, Michael, Lawrence Lazare, David Abel, Edward Grobe, and Juiced Dozberg. Thank you all. <laughs>